hey, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna be discussing some more anti-MLM news because Body or Beachbody just announced that they're no longer going to be an MLM and that they're switching to affiliate marketing. This is huge news and honestly, the more companies that end up doing this, the better. So we're gonna get into what this means for the company as well as the reps and I'm gonna react to some clips of the reps kind of discussing the change and how they're feeling about it. So with that being said, let's just get into it. So Beachbody, aka Body now, was originally founded in 1998 by Carl Deichler and John Congdon. Sorry, I might be pronouncing that wrong. And originally it actually wasn't an MLM, but if you're not familiar with Beachbody, I would say it's gotten most of its popularity from being a fitness and supplement MLM company where people sign up as coaches, which is interesting because I would say probably 99% of them have zero actual training or credentials to be considered a fitness coach. And they sell access to online workout programs as well as supplements, protein shakes that are known as Shakeology and pre-workouts, things like that. And in 2022, the company rebranded to Body, which I'll put the logo on the screen here so you can see that. I will probably mostly refer to them as Beachbody in this video just because that's what I and most people still know them as, but they did change the name to Body and they merged their online program Beachbody On Demand under that title as well. So on September 30th, Beachbody sent out an email with a link to a pre-recorded video call by Carl Deichler explaining the change to Beachbody and that they would no longer be a network marketing and that they're switching to affiliate sales. They announced that they were winding down the MLM portion of their business and would be switching to an affiliate marketing program, which is launching beginning November 1st. And the plan is to be completely out of the network marketing or MLM business by January 1st of 2025. So here's an excerpt from an article that I read about the change. I'll have this linked down below, but it says here, the next phase of our journey is to optimize and broaden our points of distribution by converting the existing MLM to a single level affiliate network and expanding our direct-to-consumer Amazon and partner-driven sales channels, which we believe will further open the sales aperture and diversify our revenue sources. Mr. Goldson continued, we recognize in light of today's current market dynamics, as well as the consumer preferences, the multi-level marketing distribution model is outdated and unsustainable. The evolution to the affiliate model offers a simpler and more modern approach to customer acquisition and will directly reward the seller for their effort. The organizational challenges and complexity of the MLM approach has weighed on the company's turnaround and the ability of partners to optimize their potential. We are confident this shift would be beneficial to stakeholders and new potential participants. I look forward to sharing more details on our third quarter earnings calls. So that is really interesting to me because them specifically saying that the MLM model is outdated and unsustainable is huge because that is what we anti-MLMers have been saying for literally years. A lot of people even who don't really care that much about anti-MLM won't buy from MLM companies just because they do seem shady or they don't support that business model. So I definitely think it does alienate some consumer base and I can understand why at this point it feels pretty oversaturated with people who already wanna sign up being signed up and everyone else just doesn't want to. There are also only so many layers of downline that really statistically can be achievable. Like if you do the math on it, obviously there is a stopping point where it's like not possible to keep growing, which is why we see a vast majority of the people in all MLMs, the structure is very similar. The vast majority of the people at the bottom of the pyramid don't really make any money. And it kind of seems like we're reaching that like burnout point where things are over capacity in network marketing as a whole with so many different companies switching to affiliate now. Also really quick, sorry to interrupt the video, but I just wanna say, I apologize if you can hear like construction and hammering noises. There is a house down the street that's like getting a lot of work done and it's pretty much going on all day. Hopefully the mic blocks it out, but if you do hear that, I apologize for the disruption. And now we're gonna get into reacting to some of the clips of the reps reacting to the news that they received. And it's been really interesting to me to see this because it seems like some of the top reps kind of knew this change was happening while others are basically expressing being completely blindsided by it. So the difference in the way that people are reacting to this is very interesting to me. And quite a few of them are really upset by the change. I mean, understandably so, despite all of my feelings about MLMs, I can understand it being really jarring and scary to be losing a huge portion of your income, especially if you've relied on it for years or like retired your spouse, like a lot of these people have. So I understand that being scary. And like, I do empathize with that regardless of how much I disagree with MLMs as a whole, I can just still say that I understand that being really scary, but also it's important to point out, well, I do feel for them and understand that being difficult. I also think this wouldn't happen if MLMs didn't exist or if their businesses and their income wasn't solely based off of the earnings of the people under them. A lot of them wouldn't be facing the same like insecurity about the changes that are happening if their business was not built off of just a downline and relying on the downline to do the work. So I wanted to hop on here because I've gotten people messaging me and asking like they're hearing about Beachbody and our body and things are getting... I'm glad that it's not just me and it's actually the reps calling it Beachbody too anyways. I feel like twisted to make it sound like body's over. No, like 
Saint, like Rodan and Fields, like other companies who have been doing um, doing this, we have officially announced we're shifting to an affiliate company, which means that we will be commission based and no longer paid on our team. What that means is for 80% of the company, honestly, it means nothing. They'll probably make more money because a lot of people aren't actively growing a team. Um, for me, I'm kind of middle of the road. I do have a medium to large size team. Uh, well, I'd say medium based on like the overall. Um, it might affect me a little bit, but honestly, I'm feeling optimistic and at peace with the announcement. I feel like, yeah, I feel weirdly, sorry, it cut me off. Um, anyways, I feel at peace about it. At first I was sad, but I don't truly know how much it'll affect my income, but my heart has always been helping people with the health and wellness products and the workouts and my community and none of that will change. So I think there's a lot of things going on out there and people panicking and people freaking out and people that aren't a part of the company like apologizing. But for the most part, I don't think it's really gonna change much for most people. Now for the people that have these top company, top teams in the company, yeah, absolutely it's gonna affect their income. But anyways, I just wanted to share cause I, sh you know, I shared, can't kill my vibe. And I just wanted to come on and like clarify. Um, yeah, I'm feeling oddly at peace and I know that's a God thing and his timing and I'm trusting him and it's gonna be okay. It's gonna to be totally okay. I just want to come on here and say that because I don't want it to be this weird, um, like cryptic, I don't know. I just think things can be portrayed wrong and people are going ham. And I just want to come on here and just say, I'm okay. And I want to talk about it. But our team is ready to continue to help people, continue to serve, and keep growing a business that way. Okay, so there is the first clip. Not a whole lot to say. This is one where she's definitely feeling a little bit more positive. She did kind of take, I don't know if I would call it a jab, but she definitely made mention of some people are definitely freaking out and getting a little bit more upset than others. And that she feels relatively at peace because she isn't one of those people with a huge downline who their income is going to drastically change with the change in the business. And then this like last screenshot at the end was just interesting to me because I've seen quite a few people posting this and it's giving calls. They keep saying, I bleed body blue, I bleed blue, stuff like that, saying that like body runs through their veins, which sounds so weird to say, body runs in my veins, it's kind of scary, body horror, but yeah, bleed blue, I bleed blue, I keep seeing this and it's just so weird to me to see about you like, I don't know, I can't imagine liking a company that much ever to be saying that, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but. And here's another clip from a rep and this one I would say she has kind of a different tone about the whole thing. Pita Alfredo bowl that was really, really yummy. Steve really enjoyed it. Um, and so we've got that. We've got a walking tracker challenge. So walking is a huge part of it, you guys. I don't do a lot of ton or a ton of like high intensity uh, cardio anymore. I just walk, walk and weights. And then, like I said, we're going to focus in on weights. So it's going to be a group specifically designed around those three things and hopefully specifically designed to get your results. Not hopefully, it will. If you follow the protocol, I'm telling you, it'll happen. So if you want more information, go ahead and drop your, um, or actually just click that link and pop in your email. You'll get an email from me. I won't spam you, I promise. Um, or you can just message me directly and we can talk about it. Okay. Okay, happy Monday. Okay, I want to include a little bit of the first part of the story. You'll notice it was kind of cut off just because we don't need to listen to her. She'll beach body the whole time. I want to include a little bit just because, again, this really speaks to me about how many of these reps had no idea what was coming because the same day that they found out and some of them were on their stories crying about the change, they were actively promoting their like accountability groups, the coaching that they offer, products that they offer, linking things. So it was very business as usual up until when they found out, which obviously to me says that they did not know the change was coming at all. Hi, I don't really talk often on this platform. I usually save that for Instagram, but I had a message and I think that many people need to hear it today. So one of the biggest things that, you know, can hold us back from moving forward or achieving our goals or whatever it is that we have set on our vision board 
is failure, right? But failure, you guys, is part of the fucking process. You're going to suck and you're going to misstep and you're going to have obstacles and you're really, really, really going to fail multiple times. If you're not failing, then you're not moving forward. Because when you fail, you learn things about the process that help you become stronger and help you get closer to your goals. So every single time I suck at something, I take a look at it and I say, okay, what can I take away from this particular experience and how can I be better next time? So don't be afraid to fail. Make the move. Take Take the risk, fucking suck at it, but learn from it. Okay? That is Has anyone else noticed on Instagram? Like, obviously, she's using some language here. The automatic bleeping always bleeps out, like, before or after the word, but it never actually works to bleep out the word, which I find so funny. I've noticed that on everyone's story that uses that. It's my message for you this Monday. Hopefully, I don't know. Hopefully, it helps. If it doesn't, what the fuck ever. And you can see here on the text, she said, I posted this this morning on Snap. It was on my heart, almost like my later in the day self would need it. And fuck did she, she does. Kind of interesting that she posted that not even knowing it was coming. And she's saying like, she now needs those words. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> my mission doesn't change. My heart doesn't change. I'm not mad. I'm sad <laughs> and I just need to process it for a moment so I appreciate you guys reaching out <laughs> but I just need just need some time okay so yeah obviously she was not anticipating that at all like I said earlier in the day she's posing her business as usual stuff and then it very quickly shifts to her not being very happy at all and crying on her story after she found out the news that Beachbody was changing and again I'm not trying to like laugh or belittle her crying on her story about it I mean I kind of am laughing a little bit which is maybe not nice of me it is just sort of funny and interesting to see because First of all, like I said earlier, all of us anti-MLMers have been saying for so long that it's not a sustainable business and that network marketing itself is just not good for a multitude of reasons, mainly being how predatory it is. The people who are really the most upset about this obviously are the ones who their income is drastically going to change because they are top reps with huge downlines. And here's another one. So they did have like a cruise going on and a couple of the reps when the change was announced, like very quickly decided not to go on the cruise because they were looking into different MLMs that they could join with their team and things like that. All right. So word has been released that the body model is no longer starting January 1st. So there's a lot of you all who follow me who are on my team are probably wondering what are my thoughts on this? Well, I did just do a live in our team Facebook group. So if you want to go there, I share all of these things. In a nutshell, though, I just um, I've been here for 16 and a half years and I built one of the largest teams within the company. I have groomed some of the most highest successes within the company. So this does hit hard. In a nutshell though, I just, um, I've been here for 16 and a half years and I built one of the largest teams within the company. I have groomed some of the most highest successes within the company. So this does hit hard. And I will say, number one, I am very disappointed with the CEO, with the message that he shared that it had lack of empathy in it. I have empathy and I want you to make sure you go over and watch that video because I don't believe that we're done. So let me share a little bit. I've always taken my time. I've never done anything that provided immediate gratification or um, was a reactionary thing. I've always wanted to make sure that the steps that I'm taking will help support the team for the long run. So what I am doing, I do believe there is another place for me and for my team, those who want to come with me. I am willing to do all of the vetting, the research, the interviewing, and positioning our team to be moved to a new position over with a company that will serve and benefit all of the teammates coming. I would never do anything to self-serve. I always wanna make sure everyone is being taken care of. So I'm working on that and I will keep you abreast of everything that I'm coming across in the companies that I feel are going to be the best fit and solutions. And of course, I would invite you to be able to connect to with the team page because I want to make sure that I'm helping. As you heard there, it's very interesting that literally the day that they got this email, she is already interviewing and vetting a new company to take her team over. And I do find, again, it does come across as a little bit weird. I don't know, I keep saying interesting because I don't know what else to call it, but it does come across different to me that she's saying she would never do anything self 
serving, but to leave an MLM so that she can maintain being the upline to a large downline I don't know what it is other than self-serving. And I'm not saying that she can't do that. I mean, she has every right to switch to a different company if hers is changing. And if that's how she wants to make her money, I don't feel like I can do anything about that, obviously, aside from raise awareness so that hopefully people don't get sucked into this idea that an MLM and being in the downline is going to bring them like the most ultimate success in the world because we see time and time again that it does not and that that company can be ripped away within an instant. But it's just interesting to say it's not self-serving when it's completely, the whole purpose behind that is to preserve what she's already built. She said she worked for 16 years to get to where she is. So I'm not saying she has no right to want to preserve that, like go off, do whatever you want. But to say it's not self-serving at all is obviously a lie. If it wasn't self-serving, she would be staying and supporting the people who are in Beachbody with affiliate sales. We saw this with Saint and Rodan and Fields as well. When those MLMs shut down and switched to affiliate marketing, the same thing happened. People were like pretty well instantly looking for different companies to switch to. A lot of them ended up going to Oliveda from Saint, which is like the olive tree people MLM. And here's the same rep just kind of talking about being ready to go to her new MLM and basically inviting people to either learn what she's switching to encourage her team to kind of swap over with her it's a good monday i'm ready to go ready to go if you already know and you're ready to go and you know where i have landed and you're ready to go let me know because i can send you on that way but if you're still trying to figure it out we're doing a business presentation today at 2 30 eastern standard time and we're actually going to be running business presentations every day this week and i'm going to be putting together um specific specialized trainings on certain areas within this new business model so that those of you who already have a great understanding and want a deeper understanding of certain things um, I'm going to be putting that together. So stay tuned for that. So let me know if you want to have that conversation to talk about the presentation today. And if by chance you miss it because it's in the middle of the day, no worries. We are recording it. She's being very intentionally vague. I still have yet to figure out what MLM she's going to. I'm sure it'll be pretty obvious soon enough. I don't know if that's because technically right now she is still collecting a paycheck from Beachbody until the affiliate program fully kicks in and until January the ranks are being maintained and stuff like that. What a lot of the times MLMers do is they don't want to say exactly where they're going because then you will just go and join without going through them. So if they're vague you have to message them or you have to click their link, sign up for their calls, what have you, so that you are signed up under them and not just kind of skipping the middleman and signing up for yourself. Those of you who've been asking for the recording for that very good Zoom I did yesterday where I shared how to evaluate a company to know if that is the company that is right for you. And I picked four different companies. So it's not that I boiled it down to these are the top four. I picked four of the very popular ones a lot of people are looking at. And I went through the criteria of how to evaluate that company to know if that's a good choice. I'm going to edit the recording later this afternoon and I'm gonna be able to issue it out. So watch for a post in my feed that will give you the option to be able to get that recording because I need to make sure that you guys get that information so that you can make your best choice as soon as possible. I hate talking to you late at night like this, but it has been one of the most amazing days. I am so excited and proud. We did our first business presentation. It went really long, but man, the joy in being able to talk to people about where we've been, what we've done. We've done amazing things with the previous company, amazing things. And now the reason why we've chosen this new company and the plan for the future with everyone, the enrollment has been rolling, rolling, rolling today. Um, we have many business presentations that are happening every day this week. So I am putting my form here. If you want to get the Zoom link to the presentations, just put it right here. Something I haven't felt in a long time, this elation, motivation, and seeing my leaders just exude joy, sending messages of, I feel so good like this. Let me give you a heads up. So obviously I am going to have to create some systems because I want to make sure I'm able to communicate information out as swiftly as I can because I know many of you are just really trying to make your decisions really quick. So I want to be able to issue that out to you. So please bear with me. I will be emailing out the Zoom training I did where I showcased four different companies. Let, let me be clear. I did not boil it down to these four as my decision making. I am showcasing four different 
network marketing companies and showing you how I evaluated each one and how I did the research. And then you can decide how that research revealed the best decision to fit the needs. That Zoom recording I will have um, sending out soon. <laughs> I got to have an opt-in for that one too, don't I? Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess just message me if you want that one too. Only. Okay, so yeah, it definitely sounds like she's getting ready and getting everyone excited to swap over. She did mention there that she evaluated four different MLMs and it sounds to me like that research is pointing definitely to one answer that she wants people to sign up for and that she's been doing calls with them and stuff. But I have to say something I notice in a lot of these MLM videos and I think it does just come with like the territory of what they're doing. A lot of these people definitely know how to speak in a way that is like engaging and enticing and it wants, it makes you wanna be a part of it. Obviously I myself do not wanna be a part of it because I know what MLMs are like and I have seen and experienced for myself firsthand what the culture of them is like and just how bad it can be and how predatory it is. But just that being said, I can totally see if someone follows her who's on the outside or who's been thinking about joining an MLM or joining under her with Beachbody before they made their switch. I can totally see how this language is very convincing and definitely does sort of make you feel like you wanna be a part of it a little bit, if that makes sense. And basically it just shows that like these people are very good at what they do in that sense because the whole goal is to get people to want to sign up under you. And now this next video that I have, um, when I break it down, talk about it, we'll be looking down a little bit. This is the only one I watched beforehand to make notes for just because the video is 14 minutes long that I recorded and I'm gonna speed it up just a little bit. But yeah, if you see me looking down, it's just kind of for where to pause and what notes I have on what she said because it is a little bit longer. All right, I feel like I'm gonna eventually need to just maybe go live because these are a minute clips and it's just gonna keep cutting you off, but so many questions already rolling in. Um, so for those of you who missed it, a week ago today, um, at about this time, we were all at the same time um, told through a recorded video, which was supposed to be a live call with the CEO, um, that our income body would be dissolving the network marketing side of the business. So essentially like we are, losing all of our our team is dissolving all of that is going away and they're switching to an affiliate which obviously affiliate is the new it's like the new thing obviously and it's kind of where everybody's headed because it was just like um there's just a lot of negativity around network marketing but let me just also say that like network marketing is what allowed me to leave a job that was paying pennies to stay home with my kids and be home through three childhoods and continuing to do that um with a very lucrative income uh it's just like not possible for many women or anyone to create that sort of income and freedom um in anything else um and so you know whatever negativity or bad rap it might get on these like weird platforms that people go and talk trash about people like reddit or whatever which is which is so bizarre to me and like these people have so much time to just like be fake account trolls and talk trash about people who they most of them don't even know and these we're just like these are people that are just trying to have a livelihood with their family like we're just trying to create something for our families anyways um so it's shifting to an affiliate model um and so with that being said on top of all of that it was like okay 95 percent, so probably 95 percent of my income would be gone just out from dissolving you know the um, team side but then on top of that i have built a customer base of over 20,000 people from sharing authentically and genuinely over the last 12 years on social media and bringing people to this Okay, real quick, just gonna pause there. I love how she says negativity on these weird platforms like Reddit, um, which yeah, Reddit definitely can be bad, but like there's so much on Reddit. It's really not all bad as much like any platform. It's kind of depending on what you look at. And it's interesting to me that she says that people are just talking trash about people trying to make a livelihood for their families because it seems like the perception of MLMs has played in to Beachbody's decision to switch to affiliate. So these people talking trash kind of did make a difference because a lot of people have been made aware of how predatory MLMs can be and as such have decided not to buy from them. And then I also wanted to quickly point out there that she did say that it would be 95% of her income that is basically going away, which is crazy to me. I mean, obviously, anyone losing 95% of their income, that would be horrifying and definitely scary. So I'm not belittling that at all. But it's also interesting to me that 95% of her income is based on 
having a downline. So only 5% of her income actually came from selling product. Even if it's not actually 95% and she was just sort of exaggerating to say like most of my income is going away. It's still crazy to hear them directly admit what we, again, as anti-MLM people have been saying for so long, the majority of these people, especially the top rep, most of the money that they're making is recruitment as much as they wanna say it's not a pyramid scheme because it's about the products. This clearly shows that it's not about the products when it gets down to really where their income is coming from. But anyways, I will let her continue. On top of that, they said, okay, we're gonna switch to an affiliate model, which was like, okay, it's still like all of that is gone, um, but you can still sell our products. Well, it was wrapped up in this bow as it was going to be like this really nice thing and there was gonna be this you know high commission payout and blah, 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 it's gonna be different. Everything that has been bad that has happened to us in hindsight, like looking back at like different things, they, they changed our comp plan last year. I was like, mm. uh, we went public a couple years ago. Mm. Um, so obviously you look back and you're like, there were some signs, but we were constantly told we we're good. And also how important we were, important we were to the network and also um, just so many different things and everything that was negative was wrapped up and told us that it was gonna be good. So, and honestly, there's just certain things I feel like maybe I can't even say them because I am still trying to protect my family's income um, through January 1st. And this is where I felt like my hands have been tied. Um, and this is where I'm like, I should write a book because looking back, you're like, wow. I was unable at a certain rate to go and diversify my income. So even when things shifted over the last probably year for me, uh, I was just like still loyal to a fault. Um, and it obviously bit me in the butt. Now, I, what I will say is there was joy lost over the certain years where it just started to feel different. I've been around since 2013. So I will say that I felt like there was a downward trend in like 2017, 2018, but I was like a blinders on like, you know, I'm going to create what I want to create. And we continued to build a pretty solid team while I watched a lot of other leaders um, kind of just quit working. And then I would say in 2020 was like a fake spike. Like you can't say that 2020 and 2021 was like the best years because well, just being able to see it over 12, it wasn't. But also like COVID created that, which was like fake, right? We were stuck at home. We just happened to have at-home workouts when everything was closed. Like we got very lucky in that space. Um, and then it just felt different. Um, people had this like negativity around um, network. Okay, and really quickly pausing there. I definitely agree with her in the sense that I think there was a huge boom for Beachbody specifically. Most MLMs in general, we have talked quite a bit on my channel here about MLMers taking advantage of COVID and everything going on in 2020 and the shutdowns and using that as a way to pitch MLMs as owning your own business at home and all this income and financial freedom that you can have right from the comfort of your home. But I definitely agree with her in the sense that Beachbody kind of lucked out in a horrible situation in the sense that they had at-home workouts when people couldn't go out and go to the gym or anything like that. And they were pitching it as something that people can sell, get healthy and fit from home. So I definitely think that there was a false sense of security in the business and a false sense of like what the success in the business would look like after things started opening back up again. Um, and so I almost like stopped talking about the business because I just thought like, well, if people, you know, come into the business side and they don't have as much joy and passion to drive as I have, um, in those early years, like how can I best support them? Um, and so I really struggled with that for a little bit. And at the same time, I was like, this has changed my life. Like I need to continue to be able to talk to people about this and give them the opportunity and present it to them and let them take with it what they want. Um, and we did have, you know, this exclusive platform. So to give you like perspective, there were people that had retired their spouses who had, you know, depended on this as their primary income who were the sole providers for their family or were the breadwinners of their family and all of that was just taken in a recorded call at the same time since we went public there was like definitely like the numbers weren't great um and it just is like when you have people that you're reporting to like you're just gonna do what they tell you to do and obviously when you're losing tons of money you're like where do i make up for that and it would be in the large payouts that they were paying to people who especially those who've been around for a really long time and built very solid organizations and built this company to what it was so obviously you know why they've done it, but it was the way it was done, the way it was presented, how quickly the turnaround is. And then with a slapped bow as like, this is gonna be a good thing was just like, no. So this is where I'm like, the products are good. If you wanna still use them, you absolutely can. There will be an affiliate side, but here's the other thing is you build up a 20,000 customer base. And I thought, okay, well, this sucks, but I can use this affiliate to like make some commission and use this client base and like continue, you know, to share the affiliate side, thinking of it that way. Well, then we were told no all of your customers will go away, everything will disappear, you'll have to sign up with a new affiliate link and every single customer will have to then sign up under you, they will not be transferred to you. So that felt like another little, <laughs> um, and I'm just being honest, like these are things that you can go and look at and see that I guess it's not like hidden information. Okay, I had to pause really quickly there to touch on what she just said. 
That's crazy to me. I'm actually really surprised to hear that the customers that people have built up, especially these top reps who for a while were what brought Beachbody the success they had when they had it, that any customers that they have earned, even just as like sales customers who aren't enrolled in the business side, they're losing all of those and basically all have to start from ground zero again. Obviously people who have a bigger following of especially people who are interested in Beachbody, that's gonna help them to get those affiliate customers. But the fact that they've already built a clientele and are basically being told like that client tell is being deleted and you have to just start again is kind of crazy and I find that really surprising so with that specifically I can definitely understand why these top earners are upset and angry about that happening but again this is why so many of us reiterate when we're talking about MLMs that you do not own the business you have no control over what happens and it's important not to put all of your eggs in an MLM basket because they can switch up like this and they do we've seen it happen so many times now and I'm sure we're going to keep seeing it happening you know and then there's this aspect of like okay well this whole team, this whole community is like, where do we go from here? And so as a leader, you think, what do we do? Um, do I look around and pray about it and figure out if there is another solution that could be good? And in doing that, I have to not only make sure that, you know, the products and everything are good, but the business model is solid. They're not going to go down the way that this went down. They, you know, will care about the livelihood of all of the people that I would like be bringing in and I need to know that they're going to win because there's no way I could watch something happen like this again. I could never, I could never, I would have to bring people over knowing like we got this. Well, I think by this point, she should be realizing that there is no MLM that she can go to that will guarantee that because much like in Beachbody, she has said herself, they were encouraged and told we're good. That will not happen. We value the coaches only for this change now to be happening with two months notice. So there's not a single MLM that she could go to that will guaranteed never make this switch. Many of them had guaranteed their reps that they would not make the switch and then they did. So... And there's a lot of, you know, building that happens. You know, there's a lot of hustle years involved in something like this. Um, and so it's like, okay, I started this in my 20s and now I'm 40. Do I want to go for this again? And like start at that, you know, where could I see myself um, getting on calls and thinking, do I feel passionate and like jazzed and like, you know, in this? Um, or what do I do? Um, because there were so many amazing things that came from this. So many friendships, so many lifelong friendships, so many trips, so many memories, just so much that came from this. And obviously like the financial freedom and all that, which by the way, like we got to a place where we weren't even allowed to talk about income. How do you bring someone into the business when you can't tell them how much you're making in a business? And I know that I could do it again. I know that I could. She's kind of talking about Beachbody as a whole and how they've like let her down and said like we've gotten to a point where we can't even talk about income but that really has nothing to do with Beachbody. That has everything to do with the FTC cracking down on MLMs like Beachbody but others as a whole and just saying you know you can't be making these false lifestyle claims. Like with Beachbody for example you have the top 1% saying everyone can make $100,000 a year like I do but then you see their income disclosure and you have 80% of the company making an average of $690 a year and that's not even factoring in anything they've spent on product or to keep their business running in the back end um because i've seen myself do it and i've watched our team and i know that we could and it was an incredible source of income um you know people can say what they want but like you know we were a million dollar team in under three years and that continued to stack and so i know that if i felt passionate about it that i could but it's like you know my kids are almost out of the house now and it's like do i want my head's just spinning okay with all sorts of things but I also knew, okay, this is a business that could be, this is a business that could be stripped away from me at any moment. We always have said that um, because that's just the nature of something like this. Um, that's why we paid off our home as soon as we could. That's why we, you know, people are like, why would you do that in cash? Why would you, this is why, because I have a sense of security and knowing that like, I have my health, I have my family, I have a, a roof over our head. I have, you know, and from here it's like, I'm gonna figure it out. And thank goodness, you know, I have a spouse who's like super supportive and has always been working. And you know, we didn't like make any moves on that end. So. I'm just thinking of all these people who did not have that. And that is like soul crushing. Um, and you know, to watch, it's like all we've ever known. So when that all happened and they told us about that affiliate model, I'm bouncing around, but I was just like, I can't do this. I cannot support this, which is such a struggle because gut health has literally like changed my life. Um, and the program is through body and the supplements I was using was through body, not all of them. Like I had branched out and used some different things because I was like, I need these supplements in this stage of my life in my 40s or whatever and we didn't have them so i was like looking you know and using those other options but the gut supplements and the greens and my husband uses shakeology religiously and recover and energize like giving so much money and supplements to this company
She says that they've always said this is a business that can be stripped away from you in an instant. And I guess after being in something for like 11 to 16 years, like some of these reps have been, obviously, even if that's a thought that you have, you think, oh, well, I've been doing this so long, like surely that's not gonna happen. And you never think that it actually will happen, but it's interesting that she's saying that now, but it's still acting so shocked and appalled that Beachbody would do this when apparently according to her, she has always said that that was a possibility. And it's also interesting that she says that when they introduced the affiliate model that she was thinking, I cannot support this because if it's about the products, like all these MLMers always say, oh, it's all about the products. I just love the products and love sharing the products. Why would this bother you so much? Like it really wouldn't bother you so much if it was truly about the product. But again, this just goes to show that it really isn't. And you know, devil's advocate, like to see things from an MLMer side. Obviously I can understand not wanting to support a company when you're, 95% of your income is going to be reduced due to a change that they're making. Like I can see you just being like, you know, I'm done. I don't even care. I like the products, but like not enough to deal with that. It just feels weird. And I love the workouts. I just did one. Um, and the platform, I do, the workout platform is incredible. I'll probably continue to use that, but it's obviously to each their own. Like everyone is going to have their own unique story behind this. It's just so crazy. Like I just, I don't know. You, did I know it was happening? No. Um, because six weeks prior, we were told we're good. He was planning trips for the next year. We were doing incentives. We were working on how to build. The network was so needed. We would never let go of that. We would, you guys built this. Um, but obviously, like I said, Red Flags is like going um, public and changing our comp plan and seeing other companies go to an affiliate model. Um, and those things will scare you when you're in something like this. But I, you know, just like remain faithful in that, like where my loyalty, like where I was lying. And um, it's, so it's just sad. Um, and you know, people saying like they're trying to find other options and whatever. I just don't feel good about jumping into something right out the gate. Like I sat on this opportunity and had to think about it and figure out if this was for me. I had to try the products. I had to like all of these things. So that's where my head is just like everything I've come and shared with you guys, I use, or I love, like I would never just pop it on my page to make money. Um, it's because I've authentically shared it and I hope that you would trust me in like, okay, she uses this or she loves this or whatever. And I'm like an affiliate, right? Like anything that we love. So we'll see. I am still toying around. I know lots of you are interested to know like what it is, but I just, I've been praying about it and I just don't feel like I should be rushing anything. Like what's for me will be. Um, some other questions I'm trying to think through everything. Like I, I'm still running my group. We started day one today in our gut group. So I'm still helping women in that area and I still love health and wellness. And so I will continue to show up in hopes to inspire you guys. And in the meantime, like if you love something that I share via Amazon or Kion or you or any of the, you know, links that I share, those things obviously will, um, I'll get a commission on those things. Um, you know, just like trying to figure it out, but it starts to phase out in November 1st. Um, the affiliate becomes a thing November 1st and then like December, beginning of December, things change even more. And then it's just gone January 1st. So the timing of it has just been like, whoa. And then like what's going on. And then you've got people who are literally dealing with a hurricane and now another hurricane on top of also dealing with, with like what I'm dealing with. And so I just think about their families and it's crazy. But at the end of the day, it's a business and they're going to do what they have to do, whether we agree with it or not. And that is when you realize you are a number. Um, but it didn't feel that way in the beginning. And at, at some point things shifted. I think it was when, it was before we went public, but then after that, it was just, we were at the hand of, someone was talking on a call about how it's just like, we were in this big brother simulation. It's like, oh, you don't like this anymore. They're just gonna like, boop, get rid of it. Like you have no say. Again, I feel like that's crazy to hear her admit to that they felt like it was a big brother simulation. First of all, that's like pretty dramatic, but it is kind of crazy to hear her say essentially that it is like a cult in that if you say that you don't like something, you're just sort of like, brushed aside or you know that's not taken seriously or you're just okay well don't do it then goodbye out the door kind of thing which again is what we've all been saying for so long and something that a lot of anti-MLMers do criticize about MLMs is like that cult-like mentality that happens. You know we would voice our concerns we would say suggestions and I just didn't feel heard over the last couple years um but I've been in life I'm all over the place um <laughs> so this is why I was like I should just like write down all these questions and go live um so if you want to continue to um, use body and like use the supplements and all of that i am going to figure out what to do in that situation as far as the affiliate link goes i do love the workouts um i've brought over twenty thousand of you to that um i love the gut protocol supplements but again i'm like just looking for other options and how i can continue to support um so many women who had my symptoms and were feeling the way i was feeling and help them through health and wellness like i always have and serving those people um but also finding supplements that i can use that are outside of that platform if that makes sense i don't know and honestly so many of you are like no question i just want to say like my thoughts are with you prayers like i'm so sad for you like whatever um we're gonna be okay. Thank you for just every single one of you who have just shown so much love and support over the last week. And honestly, over the last 12 years, like obviously would never have even had a business or a platform that has grown like this if it weren't for all of you guys. So 
um, I'm realizing like I can, I am more than just the brand, right? I've always taught my team. We are not body. We are our own brand. We can figure this out. So I'm like, maybe this is my time to like figure out what I'm ready to do next. Like this is not the end. This is not the end of the book. This is just a closed chapter. I need to open up a new chapter. I have helped so many women with building six figure incomes. Like I know I could do this. Um, and to just answer the question of like, how am I doing? I am a mix of emotions. I have moments where I am totally, it's like uh, inside out too, where I'm like in the teenager head, where it's like all the emotions at one time bouncing off of each other. You know, one time I'm, I was mad and then I was sad and then I feel like I was mourning and then I'm like hopeful and then I'm sad again. And then like, I know it's gonna be okay. But when it's all you've done for 12 years, like with anything, you're just like, okay, well, um, guess we're gonna figure out what we're doing next. So anyways, stay tuned. The story is not over. It's just a closed chapter and we are gonna move on to a bigger and brighter one. So that is her video all done there. Again, it was kind of a longer video, but I definitely feel like of all the reps I've seen, she has gone the most in depth about it, like publicly. I'm sure some of them, as they mentioned, have done live chats on their Facebook and stuff like that, but I'm not trying to like join in a bunch of Facebook groups that I should not probably be in. But yeah, my main takeaway from everything that she said is that it definitely does seem like a lot of these top reps still like had no idea that this was coming and are feeling very blindsided and very upset by the change and just very like hurt by the fact that Beachbody would do this as a whole. And again, I keep saying it, but it does just go to reiterate that even with these companies, you can work for so long for them. You can be so secure in your income and what you're doing and how big your downline is that you feel pretty untouchable. But it just goes to show that despite all of that, you don't own any of the business and things like this can change at a moment's notice and you don't get any say, you don't have to like it, but it just sort of is what it is. And at the end of the day, Beachbody is a business company. They are going to make their money somehow. And if they see their profits falling, they're going to shift accordingly, whether that pays off for the top reps or not. And she made mentioned to a few things that Carl said specifically in the video announcing that this would be happening that was sent to everyone. That is a 40 minute video. There's no way I'm playing it all. I'm just going to overlay a couple of clips here that of things he said that sort of explained the change a little bit more and give you an idea of what type of video that these reps received. It was this simple concept, get results with a program, share your enthusiasm with everyone and anyone while you're getting results and earn income on every customer that you attract. Then as some of those customers turn into partners, you would earn a share of the income that they generate too. It was this innovative way to leverage our really effective home fitness and nutrition programs with powerfully unique supplements. And then you let that success speak for itself through our customers, like a word of mouth marketing machine. But for the last several years, network marketing has faced growing headwinds from regulatory and social media attacks and ongoing cultural scrutiny to also our own field, having less and less enthusiasm for building and managing teams of partners. I'm not sure if you even maybe pay attention to the regulatory side of the stuff, but we're facing significant legal and regulatory threats to the critical independent contractor relationship between the company and the field. And now there's even the threat by the Federal Trade Com Commission, the FTC, to completely ban making any income claims over a few hundred dollars a year in network marketing. Even worse, some regulators and state attorneys general are starting to push for a ban of multi-level marketing altogether. It's become this challenging uphill battle every day. And we're trying to do something important here. These headwinds aren't only threatening the viability of the industry of network marketing, but actually the ongoing drop in our own productivity obviously has undermined your earnings and it's suppressing our ability to help more people achieve their goals and lead healthy, fulfilling lives. In fact, even despite significant changes to the comp plan last year and revisions to our product configurations and incentives, the network has continued a steep decline. We've come to realize and if we don't make changes to the business model, it's possible we will lose the opportunity to help people all together. At the same time that we were witnessing other networks changing their models and thinking like, surely there must be a way to work through this. I mean, I even made a video about our commitment to our partners that we've got to find a way to invent our way through this. Well, the data and the surveys that we did with the field are telling us what direction that we need to go with. We need streamlined technology. We need better sales conversion. We need better alignment between company and partners and dramatically improved rewards and economics for the partner who sells. In fact, a recent survey gave us some very interesting and important insights into the mindset of our network of partners. 44% of the body partners surveyed aren't comfortable sharing the business opportunity, which is the only way to build a productive team and unlock the rewards of our comp plan. That statistic was a sobering realization. Almost half the people paying monthly fees to be a partner aren't even comfortable pursuing the complete opportunity. In fact, nearly half have never shared the business opportunity with anyone, mainly because they either lack confidence or they're afraid of being asked if it's one of those network marketing things. And among the 29% in the survey who have shared the opportunity, but who don't do it anymore, they said half their prospects aren't even interested at all. So they just stopped sharing the opportunity altogether. Look, don't get me wrong. We do have a bunch of partners who are quite successful in presenting the business opportunity, growing teams. And I'm so grateful and honestly, in this environment, super impressed at what these partners do and how committed they are to our mission. And I'm proud that many of them we're able to leverage the existing network marketing model into significant earnings. But the reality is that these business builders have become the minority. 
And we must look at the larger partner community and configure the business to give the greatest number of participants the opportunity to build income by focusing on the essence of our mission of helping people get healthy and fit without the complexity of the current comp plan and the pressure to build a team. As a quick summary, here's how we'll transition. And we understand that we're making significant changes and we want to be fair to our partners. So we'll continue to pay out on our existing compensation plan through January 1st. We will officially open the affiliate opportunity on November 1st. And those orders affiliates generate will be processed on body.com. We'll stop taking orders on teambeachbody.com on December 4th, but you'll be paid on any ongoing network subscription renewals through January 1st, 2025. Because of the disruption this announcement might cause, we are freezing ranks of active partners from dropping through the end of the year. So this announcement doesn't create a collapse of your cycling opportunity. The lowest paid rank used for calculating bonus going forward will be your paid rank for the bonus week ending October 2nd. That's this Wednesday. After this week, your paid rank can still move up, but not down. Of course, there'll still be a requirement to maintain your active status for each bonus week to be paid. Body.com will be your new conversion funnel. And this change to the compensation plan will effectively move all compensation to the seller, but not at the industry standard affiliate commission of like five to 15%, but up to 50%. So yeah, as you can hear from that, he did mention that like the FTC was really heavily cracking down on MLMs, which has had some impact in the decision they're making. And another thing that he talked about was how network marketing as a whole has kind of a bad reputation and has received social media attacks, which I think is pretty dramatic, but it does go to show that people's perception of MLMs was factored into this decision. And I think that they've realized that being an MLM is kind of alienating potential clientele or future customers. He also kind of touched on that they did a survey of reps and a lot of them, like 44%, he said, didn't feel comfortable promoting the business at all. So they feel like the switch to affiliate will better serve a larger majority of the reps, which I actually agree with because I think if you're at the bottom of the pyramid, you're not really making anything anyways, switching to just affiliate and just getting paid for the work that you do selling without having to feel like you're forcing people to sign up or without recruitment being part of it. I definitely feel like that's actually an easier and better opportunity for majority of people. It just obviously doesn't serve those top people. And those are the ones who are looking at switching. And obviously I've talked about this quite a bit on my channel, but Beachbody was actually my introduction to MLMs. This is the one that I joined like seven or eight years ago when they were still Beachbody, not body. And I did not feel comfortable selling the business to people at all. I felt way too pushy, way too weird about the language that they wanted me to use. It felt very forced. I've made a video about why I quit Beachbody. It's like the first video on my channel pretty much. But generally like I did not last long in Beachbody at all. It was totally not for me. It definitely made me really uncomfortable. I'm thankful for it because it is what led me to even learn what an MLM was and thus started my channel. So I am really glad about that. And like everything kind of happens the way that it should, but I definitely can see a vast majority of people not being comfortable with that aspect of the business, just because I definitely fell into that. If I was still in there now, that would definitely be what I would have voted as well. Like, no, I'm not comfortable selling the business. And honestly, like in general, I don't see a problem at all with people selling the products as like affiliate links. I myself do some affiliate sales. I definitely am not very good with it. I don't post very often at all, but I use like to know it, Amazon, that kind of stuff where I just get a small commission and it doesn't cost like the buyer anything extra. So it's just kind of like a nice little kickback for sharing stuff that I already use and like. And even when I was in B body like the workouts were fine i mean they weren't like revolutionary you can get all the same stuff on youtube for free but if you like workout programs or you're going to be paying for a workout program anyways like i didn't feel like they were all that bad shakeology i don't know if the taste has changed since then for me i did not like the taste of it so that was a personal thing i also don't really like most protein powders because i think they taste kind of gross but shakeology was like not it for me and here's another quick video not much to say about this one but again just to show another reaction of a rep who is like very clearly not happy I have to mute this one because there is sound, but I'll read the text on it. It says, for 15 years, God allowed me to lead an army of women. It wasn't a job. It was my life's passion, my calling. And in the background, she's just making a Shakeology. And then the next part of the text says, and she's crying here on the screen. Although I'm not sure what God is calling us to do yet. One thing I know is true. God is not done with our fit family. We are not done here. And then the next one, so it looks like she's doing like reading her Bible and it says, so I'll be here praying for guidance while also doing the last thing God called me to do. Sharing how Belle Vital changed my, Belle Vital, I don't know what that is. Changed my entire life, reaching my hand out and help as many women battle their own Goliaths. And then the last video that I want to include here, which is going to seem super random, is from a Monate rep, one of the top Monate reps, Sarah. And she kind of chose this convenient timing while all this was going on. I'm sure she's seen it. But around the same time, she was posting about how sales, which is what she's referring <laughs> network marketing as, gets a bad rep and that she thinks that actually working in a corporate regular job is way more risky than MLMs, which is interesting that she's saying this right now, just given that a lot of people 
in Beachbody just found out that the majority of their income is basically no more. But yeah, I wanted to include that here just to kind of talk about it in general because I feel like even though she is in a different MLM, it does still kind of apply. And who knows, one day this might happen to Monet too. Sales gets a bad rap, okay? Because we we know people who are slimy salespeople or so, you know our aunt or our uncle or grandma or you know our second cousin uh, twice removed or whatever doesn't like, okay, whatever. Every single industry has bad apples, okay? Like you can't tell me, uh, you guys, I've shared the story of the nurse who took a fentanyl patch off of a patient's back and ate it and got caught, okay? We know that every industry has bad apples. Sales is the industry that gives you the most potential to increase your earnings. And I'm so tired of hearing people say that it's too risky because every single video I am seeing on Instagram and on TikTok right now is about big corporation layoffs. Working as a nurse took so much of my mental health. Not only that, it took all my time with my kids when they were little. I went back to work at six weeks with all three of them to make $24 an hour to turn around and pay a sitter $12 an hour to watch them. I don't, sales is not risky for your potential for earned income. If you need to make more, you're not gonna walk into your manager's office and say, I need to make $50 more an hour. It's not going to happen. But in sales, you can generate more sales to generate more income. And I cannot stand how many people are on the internet telling others that working in my industry is too risky. It is the best choice for increasing your income. What I do is your best option to increase your revenue. I, I gotta plug Monet because it is insane how they pay on sales. I'm not talking building a team. Yes, building a team, you are going to make more because you have more responsibility, more people that you are coaching and helping them to be successful. But in sales alone, you earn up to 45% commission. Like the most commission I make on LTK is like 11.2%. You make minimum 15% on your sales. You get paid weekly on commissions plus bonuses. Plus you can earn up to an additional 15% off of your customer sales. You can make four to five figures in your first two months. Okay. In your first 30 days with Monate because of the way they pay for just customer sales. The risk is trusting corporate America to care about you. <laughs> That's the risky. So if you are someone who wants a job from home where you're able to generate an income from home with your kids, with your spouse, working on a schedule that works for you, maybe you're a night owl and you want to start creating content and building sales from 10 to 1 a.m. every night. Or maybe you are a morning person. You like to get up at 4 or 5 a.m. and work out and then work for a few hours. If you need flexibility and the ability to generate more revenue for you and your family, this is the best thing for it. It has the lowest overhead with the highest return on your investment and the highest rate of bonuses and commissions for sales. I'm not speaking as a mom right now. I'm speaking as someone who has been in business for years and done many things. And I feel so sad for the women that are on social media looking, they put in 300 applications for a job after being laid off and they haven't heard anything back or they've accepted this like big pay cut. If you don't know sales, guess who didn't know sales when she started seven years ago and has made eight figures in seven years. I didn't know Jack about sales, but guess who knows about sales now? Me. Guess who can teach you and coach you and mentor you in sales? Me. And you get this business mentorship and coaching for free. Try to find a business coach out there to help you make a hundred grand a month and like to know it. Ain't gonna happen. You just, no, Amazon storefront, you gotta buy the guide. MRR, you gotta buy the guide. TikTok shop, gotta buy their guide. Women are selling themselves short in the sales industry and you are cutting yourself off at the knees and it is that scarcity mindset. It's fear. Fear of what? Of being home with your kids? Of working on a schedule that works for you? Of being able to pay cash for braces? You're gonna let some random person from another country dictate how you're generating income for your family? That's going to mean more to you than what you're doing for your own family. If I need to make more this month, I know how to make more this month. I don't have to wait for my annual review to max me out at a 3% increase on my $24 an hour. Women are selling themselves short. So stuck in that scarcity mindset or that fear when this has been here for you the whole time. I don't know. I just, I was just on TikTok and came across three videos back to back to back of women sobbing into their camera saying, I, I was laid off from a job where I thought I was safe. I was laid off from a job where I thought I was safe. I quit my nursing job and have nothing else lined up. Um, I didn't get a raise this year because my company isn't making any money. What do I do? How do I like, it, you have to get out of your, what you should do or were supposed to do mindset or that scarcity mindset or that victim mentality or letting fear run your life. And finally, like pick yourself up, get over yourself, get over your fear of the opinions of others who don't matter anyway. The people who matter most are the people that are in your home, that you are working for, that you want to be around. My kids matter more to me than anything anyone can say on the internet. You're wasting too much time. If you would just decide, you know what? I'm going to finally take control. And this is coming from someone. Who okay, so cut it out there. She went on for a little bit more. But first of all, one thing that I really don't get that she said is like, you're going to let someone from another country dictate your livelihood. 
I didn't really get that, but when I saw that, I was like, wait, is this fucking play about us? Because I live in Canada, so I'm like, wait, is she talking about me? She was referring to something. Obviously, I don't think she was referring to me. I really don't think I'm much on her radar. She does liken it to a nine to five as well, which is a different choice considering that many nine to fives do have hourly plus commission positions or sales positions where it is majority commission and you can make as much as you want depending on how much you sell. So that is something where you can still have the security of a traditional job while be making sales and commission if sales is something you wanna do. And sales is not easy at all. I know she says, oh, well, I have no experience in sales, but like I can teach you now because now I know. But sales in general is not something that everyone is cut out for. I feel like it takes a very specific type of personality to be able to put themselves out there like that, to be a little bit pushy, to be like a hard closer when it comes to sales, but there are regular corporate jobs like these MLMers love to shit on where you can make tons of commission. And then she also says, the risk is trusting corporate America to care about you, which I found that really interesting because in the other video that we just watched, the other Beachbody rep was saying how she felt like just a number and that the company was changing whether she liked it or not. And I'm sure that Sarah has seen the news about Beachbody changing. So I wonder if she would say that same thing to some of these top reps who are saying that 95% of their income is gone. And then also her saying that in order to be successful or to find someone to teach you how to be successful about MRR, Amazon, like to know it, you have to buy all these courses and stuff. That's just simply not true. You can, I mean, MRR, I guess, kind of, because like that is buying and reselling a course. And I think that that seems kind of sketchy and weird too. But like Amazon, like to know it, just regular affiliate sales. You don't need to buy any course to do it. You don't have to buy anything to do it. You literally can just sign up and link things that you already have and use all the time or stuff that you'd be buying anyways. But really the main thing that it seems like to me that helps people do really well with those types of programs is one, having a big following. That's just always gonna help because it's more chances that someone is interested in what you're linking and there's just more eyes on your stuff and therefore more chance for people to buy it. And two, having an audience that cares and is interested in what you're sharing and like wants to know your product recommendations and stuff. But you definitely don't need a giant following. I have like a really small following and I've been approved and like to know it for like a few years now. Obviously I don't make a ton from it and I also am very bad, like I mentioned, at posting links on that. I just never really do it. But you don't need anything and you don't need to buy anything or do any courses or anything like that in order to be able to sell on those or in order to be successful. So yeah, this whole thing is very reminiscent to me of when Saint and Rodan and Fields shut down their MLM portion and switched to affiliate and also beauty counter to a lesser extent. They like kind of closed and then said they were reopening but then didn't. So I think a lot of people are just sort of shifting away from that one as well. And much like with those situations, I really wish that this would be the thing that got these people to wake up and realize that they don't own their business and any MLM this can happen to. Instead of just jumping to a new one, I really wish that they would realize like, maybe I shouldn't be doing an MLM because this is bound to happen with really any of them, or at least it could, it could happen with any of them. And they always talk about how you can be let go from any job, but that with an MLM, you own your business and like you're in control. You can work as much or as little as you want. But again, this just very clearly proves that even as a top earner, you are not in control and you don't own anything and it can change at the drop of a hat and you just kind of have to go with it or switch to a different MLM. And I mean, yes, like technically they're right. You can get dropped from any job. Like it's always possible, but there are also labor laws involved with regular jobs. There are laws protecting you from wrongful termination, things like that. Yeah, life is never without any risk, but for people who put all of their eggs in an MLM basket, even to go as far as to like retire their spouses, and just rely solely on the MLM for their income, that is a very slippery and dangerous slope to be on. And I do really feel for them in basically losing their job or at least losing most of their income. Yes, they can still sell affiliate and like I think that some of them will or at least they should, especially if it is just about the products like they say, but to lose your income in that way would definitely be really difficult and I can empathize with that for sure. And like I said, I wish this would be a wake up call for them to just stop being in MLMs altogether, but it is more of just a prompt for them to start looking into new MLMs to transfer their team over to. But overall, I think a lot of these companies switching to an affiliate only program is definitely a positive trend in the right direction in the terms of that MLMs are very predatory. It is an outdated business model. And I think that all these companies changing is a good thing because overall it seems to be that other companies are noticing and kind of following suit. I can still feel for the reps and say that like it sucks to lose your income, but I also think that wouldn't be a concern if your income wasn't solely based on a downline. And that's kind of the problem with being in these companies as a whole. That income never really should have been built off the work of a downline anyways. So kind of is what it is. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, let me know down below, leave a like and hit subscribe while you're down there. And with that being said, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.